Hey, Trucked Up guys and gals, it's Simon here with Trucked Up EVs. I've got a special guest with me today, Andrew from the Electric Vehicle Association of Alberta. Yes, there is an EV association here, and it's got all kinds of opportunities, challenges, and things ahead of it. And we're gonna be talking with the director, Andrew, here. I'm so excited to have him on the channel. Andrew, welcome to Trucked Up EVs. Always taking any advantage we can to talk electric vehicles. Okay, so awesome. It. So when did the organization start? Uh, 2014. Wow, okay, so early in the cycle there, you had yeah. very few EVs. Was it Leaf out at that time? Yeah, Leaf and Tesla Model S, Total, pretty much yeah, it. Tesla Model S, the Leaf and the Roadster, if you want to include that. Right, How and the Chevy Bolt, or Chevy Bolt, excuse Chevy, me. For, the Chevy Volt, I think, was coming out or had been announced something Yeah, it was around that time. that time. Wow, so you guys were ahead of the curve. Yeah. You were th forward thinking. So, yeah, it's like when I got my EV around that same time, we had no chargers in the province to go from outside of Edmonton. I was oh stuck here. Oh my goodness. And oh I my had God. the cross my fingers that that was going to get improved and yeah, yeah. thankfully it has. So what's some, been some of the biggest challenges that you've you faced in, in that journey? Certainly charging. Um, and then just Alberta is an oil and gas centric province. And so with that comes certain uh, viewpoints that are against EV adoption, frankly, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So some people seem to be afraid that if we move EVs forward, we move them back, their industry back. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that actually is the case, but I we have to you, yeah. counter that. Yeah, if I would have been able to make it to Fort McMurray <laughs> with my truck, that's exactly what we were gonna be talking about. I had an interview set up for that very, very purpose, is that there's this marriage that's available between the oil and gas sector and, and EVs. They're not actually competing with one another. You know, I drove on asphalt, uh, my truck's made of plastic. Right. Uh, there's petroleum product everywhere. And there's, that's not going anywhere. So you're kind of of the same mind that this is more, let's try to move towards more of a harmonious thing rather than this combative kind of polarizing aspect of yep. things. Uh, you know, unfortunately you're not. So a lot of our electricity comes from natural gas still, and that's gonna right. be the way it is for the foreseeable future. So if we do increase EV adoption, we do increase the demand for electricity, Again, that's only helping them out in ways. One thing that isn't taken into account sometimes, and, and, and we were talking about this earlier, is the amount of oil and gas that's used to generate electricity, and that electricity is then used by oil and gas. A lot of people are very worried about the effect of, of EVs in Alberta on the grid, but the largest demand growth on the grid for the past 30 years has been the oil and gas sector. And data centers, Coming up, yeah. yeah. Data centers will probably draw far more electrical demand than the EV sector. So that must be one piece of education that's kind of, you're trying to get that message out that they're not as threatening. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And you know, even back then, um, we had studies being done with local utilities because they were, they knew this was coming and they were a little concerned because it was new to everyone. And they were studying charging habits of early EV adopters to see what is it actually doing? Are there any nuances that can help them plan. Great to see that they were forward thinking from a utility side. Yeah, that's actually impressive. And I keep hearing this too. I mean, we've got BC Hydro, which is more government involved. And I think in Alberta, you have, what are your two main? Uh, ACCO, um, NMAX and uh, EPCOR. Okay. ACCO uh, kind of province-wide, NMAX, Calgary, and, uh, right. EPCOR here. And there's Fortis as well. I keep hearing positive things about ACCO. Tell me a little bit, about, are they more embracing? Of yeah, they've partnered with different uh, groups to put out some of the early charging networks. Uh, wow. Down south of, uh, in Alberta, we had Peaks to Prairies, that they were instrumental partnering with others uh, to enable getting around most of southern Alberta years and years ago. And they have chargers in other rural areas of Alberta. So yeah, they've been, they've been fantastic to work with and just to have in the province as a resource. That's very interesting because when I think about the southern end of things, when I was planning my trucked up tour across Alberta, as soon as I got past Edmonton, especially in the south, there's this network maybe that had something to do with that development. Yeah. yeah, and I think part of it is um, just the geography, the spatial, uh, you know, where cities are, it was easier to connect towns. Right. As you go north, the gaps increase, and so it becomes harder to make that network kind of viable. And you've got to get crazy creative. And if you don't have a, a, a business case, because yeah. you're not driven by an infrastructural mandate, you're driven by a business mandate. So that impacts things. I mean, if you're saying, okay, we're gonna get this service out, we may lose tons of money, but we're gonna get this service out, that's a different mindset than, well, we're gonna lose money for a while, but we're hoping eventually we'll make something out of this. So is your, uh, the association, has it got direct contacts with a lot of these? Uh, like, have you, you kind of set up like, 
I hate to use the example, but like the Nature Trust or some of these things where there's the kind of behind the scenes, you're not looking for uh, accolades, but you're just wanting to move that, that needle forward. Absolutely, we've been in discussions with, as I say, different utilities for years, and it's nothing on the official side, but it's just to have that conversation. Um, right. We learn from them, they learn from us. Uh, we can assist them with some promotions when you know when they do launch a charging network. Right. They want as many EVs to show up as they can. Yes. And at the time in the past, there weren't a lot. Yes. So anything we could do to increase that turnout was great, right? Appreciated by them. They're obviously having an impact because there's a lot more EVs than the last time I was through Alberta. Yeah, we do not bad. I mean, I can't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I know we grew 50% uh, annual registrations for EVs uh, the last uh, data that came out. So. Um, now that's thousands of EVs, not tens or hundreds of thousands, but as we go 50%, 50%, 50% compound, it's going to add up. So what do you see as the biggest thing moving forward for, for Alberta? I think it's just the selection of EVs that are available now. Uh, when we first started, we were hearing about the need for trucks constantly, and we had no response. Um, we had maybe some future products that were being talked about, but you know we know that that's future. They might not come out the way that they were promised. We have uh, great options like the Lightning and the or the Lightning, yeah, yep. and the uh, Silverado. Silverado EV. Um, we got the Cybertruck. We've got the Rivian. Yeah, Rams yeah. coming to market, and I think the Chinese are really trying to come here, but they got to work around a few tariffs. As soon as you go north of Edmonton, their work trucks and their beaten. Like if you get three years out of your truck, they drive them literally into the dirt. 90% of the trucks north of, of Edmonton and north of Prince George are used in that purpose and there's nothing to replace them at this time. Yep. But for those 85% of people who are using their trucks for shopping, this is a huge use case. It makes more and more sense now. And I'd like to add that, you know, you're talking about the soccer mom type soccer, uh, mm. truck owners, but one of the first lightning owners in the province was a contracting company an owner of a contracting company. And when I was talking to them, just to figure out why did you take this leap of faith? Yeah. Were you an EV fan to begin with? No, he was not. He was, you know, a regular Albertan, but he looks at the bottom line at his pockets, right. uh, finances. And when he heard that there was not gonna be oil changes on an EV, um, and he did the math, because he was driving this truck 5,000 kilometers every two weeks. That's an oil change every two weeks. It's not the cost of the oil change, but it's the time that that vehicle's out of service. And it's a employee that is out of service getting the vehicle serviced, uh, where they're not generating revenue. And that was his driver to do Excellent this pilot. Point. Made total business sense. It did. Like, he wasn't looking at it from environmental or no. any of that kind of stuff. He was saying, what's the bottom line for my company? And so the bonus on top of that, because that was his main driver, was compared to the truck he was replacing, he would save about $15,000 a year you know, on the electricity versus <laughs> gas side. 15,000. 15,000, but that was a bonus. That wasn't his reason. Oh my goodness. And that happened about a year ago. Yeah. Um, bit, maybe a bit longer, and he's now added another EV to his fleet, so it is working. He was willing to throw it away. He was willing to say, this is a trial. If it doesn't yeah. work, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. But it has been working for him, so. And that's wonderful, and getting that message out through your association to show, look, give it a try. If you don't like it, toss it. I just want to thank you so much for, for taking this time out of your busy day and coming down here and, and for the interview. I really appreciate it. Oh, we, you know, we thank people like you that are doing the hard work of getting the word out across Canada, three different provinces, because um, it really is a matter of education. Yeah. Uh, there are still people to this day that don't know anything about electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. And it's scary to them. Foreign yeah. things are scary to people, that's understandable. Yeah. But the more they hear about it, uh, the truck segment of the population that you're focusing on, you know, that's an area where we really need education. We need people to have a more hands-on approach that they talk, because I can talk trucks with people, but I don't know trucks. Right? I can just do speeds and feeds and other people's perspectives. I can relay them. But you and uh, the audience you engage with can actually do the you know, talking true about the challenges and how this works, why this works. Uh, so it's fantastic that you're, you're doing what you're oh, doing. Oh, well, my head's swollen up. I now suddenly feel very self-important. <laughs> Andrew, thank you very much for all your time. Our today. pleasure. Really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this content, there's more coming. As I do my crazy trucked-up stop across this amazing country, I'm interviewing different people and organizations as I go, including regarding mining. You're going to like that one. So stick around. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, and bell notification icon down below so you don't miss an episode. As always, thanks for watching.